Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. It's Monday the 18th of November 2024 and can you believe it? It's 37 days until Christmas. So Christmas is really fast approaching and you're wondering how did the year run so fast? Well, it does. Time flies. I just hope that you've been able to accomplish a lot of things that you set out for yourself in the beginning of the year. Anyways, on today's breakfast show, we're looking at several hot topics, one of which Ondo decides the aftermath of the governorship election in Ondo State. Another topic we'll be discussing much later in the show is the bill to exempt companies from tax for debate next week. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day to set the tone. Success is woken from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm and that is according to Winston Churchill. He was a British statesman, a military officer and a writer but he was popularly known as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from around 1951 to 1955, well from around 1940 and 45 and then again from 51 to 55 and he says this morning success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm and that is so apt I think that is even what we need to hear right now a lot of times we're we're a bit downcast when we don't get things you know the right way i mean i was just saying it's 37 days until christmas and i hope you've been able to achieve all that you know you set out for yourself but if you are not able to achieve that sometimes it can just um dampen your mood it can just make you lose motivation to keep going on but what winston is telling us this morning is you can go from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm because you are hoping for the best and you never know the next time you try it again you might just hit the jackpot you might just you know look at that thing that you've done and it materialized into something else something even bigger than you ever imagined in the first place so most times you want to feel some type of way and say you know what i, I failed i'm not going to try again i'm not going to do this again but no you need to pick up pick up yourself and go for it so if you fall down seven times well you need to stand up eight times you need to show up more times than you than you've fallen you've, you need to show up more times than you've ever failed you cannot just you know just lose yourself no you shouldn't do that what you need to do is ensure that you're going with lots of enthusiasm saying I can do it if you do not believe in yourself you will not be able to achieve anything that you've set out and you cannot even get people to believe in you when you do not believe in yourself. So it starts with you. It starts with your mindset. And that's why we were giving you this quote this morning to set the tone for your day, set the tone for your week, and then even the remainder of the year. So make sure that regardless of whatever is happening, even with the economy, anything that you're seeing going around, just know that, yes, I know that I will succeed. I know that I am a success. And even if this current reality is telling me that I'm failing, I will keep keep going I will keep showing up for myself and then I will just hit that big thing I've always wanted all right moving over to our top trending stories this morning this first one said local calls for ban on foreign currency use in Nigeria Senator Ned Wonko has proposed a decisive policy to prohibit the use of foreign currencies including the US dollars for transactions within Nigeria Speaking on the matter, the senator emphasized that such a move is crucial to safeguarding the value of the Naira and boosting the country's economic sovereignty. According to Wonko, the excessive reliance on foreign currencies has adversely impacted Nigeria's economy, fueling inflation and undermining local industries. He argued that promoting the Naira as the sole legal tender for domestic transactions would enhance economic stability, encourage local investments, and reduce dependence on external markets. The senator further called on financial institutions, businesses, and government bodies to support the initiative by strengthening mechanisms to enforce compliance. 
It urged the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to implement stringent policies that discourage the dollarization of the economy while ensuring that the Naira remains the preferred currency for all forms of trade. The proposal has sparked discussions among stakeholders with supporters, highlighting its potential to bolster national pride and economic resilience. Critics, however, cautioned against potential disruptions to international trade and the need for robust measures to build confidence in the Naira before implementing such a ban. As debate unfolds, um, Senator Wonka's proposition reignites conversation about the future of Nigeria's currency and the steps needed to secure the, the country's economic autonomy. If you go to the United Kingdom, for instance, do you think they sell anything in Naira? Or do you think they make any transaction in Naira? If you go to Bangkok, for instance, do you think they would use another currency? Or if you go to the United States of America, which is uh, most times the currency that we use, we, we try to use dollars a lot of times in Nigeria, do you think they're using your own currency? No. In fact, there are chances that they are not even using the Canadian dollars, which is you know almost close to that. So why are we using their own currency? Why are we not trying to strengthen our own? Well, let's, let's just keep that somewhere. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll have more on this. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Okay, so we're talking about the ban on foreign currencies, um, you know, for transactions in Nigeria. And there were several questions I was asking, and one of which, do we use or do other countries use our own currency? So why are we using their own, currency, their own currencies, I beg your pardon, for local transactions? I understand that, you know, there are several times you want to buy something else, um, you know, abroad, having to do foreign transactions. And of course, you have to buy in their own currency. And that should be the same way we cannot be using other currencies strengthening their own currencies and and in fact devaluing our own instead of us to be looking at ways that we can strengthen the naira i was having a conversation yesterday with someone and she was telling me how 1000 naira now is about 350 sefa and that is just our neighboring country here in Benin Republic. I remember when 1000 used to be about 3000 um sefa so now other countries, their own currency is even strengthening them more. And she was saying, most of my people are not here anymore. Most of my people have left Nigeria because, of course, uh, the, the, the Naira is so weak. And I'm like, this is so much damage that has been done to our currency. And what are we doing to ensure that we can strengthen it? And I'm sure this is one way we can. Because you go into, especially in real estate, they tell you, oh, this house is how many thousand, how many million dollars, whatever they call it. Most times, even local businesses like, um, you know, uh, people who make clothes, fashion designers, they're telling you that they're charging dollars. People who do skincare, they're telling you that they're charging dollars. Almost everything, you want to buy something, they tell you that because the Naira is volatile, um, they have to charge in dollars. But if you're not going to ensure that you're strengthening the Naira now, then what happens? The Naira is also always going to be volatile. It's always going to be that way, except you start to do something. So you cannot just complain, um, you know, about the Naira when you are also doing something to make it weaker day by day. So I think this ban is a good way to go. Um, if you have to buy something, of course, if you need to buy something in China, you have to use their own currency. If you have to buy something in the US, you use the dollars. I'm not against that. You can source for it. And I think that would even help um, when it comes with the exchange rates because, of course, everything has to do with demand and supply. So if you have to buy it because not everybody is using the dollars anymore here, we'll have enough to go around and it will just help a bit. So it's not the, the um, holy grail measure to say, yes, this will strengthen the Naira immediately or something. But these are little policies that we can start to implement to ensure that, you know, we're strengthening Naira, the economy is getting better, and it will just work for each and every one of us. We're all crying that this economy is insane at the moment. But if we're not doing our own bits, then it's always going to remain like this or even deteriorate the more. And what kind of economy do we want to leave to our kids? That's a question, you know, a thoughtful question that you need to think about right now. Anyways, moving over to another top trending story. This says Niger Nigeria's external debt projected to hit 45 billion by January. 
Nigeria's external debt is anticipated to rise to $45 billion before the end of December 2024, raising concerns about the country's financial sustainability. This projection comes amidst ongoing borrowing to fund national infrastructure, address budget deficits, and finance critical development projects. Um, according to reports, the federal government has been securing loans from various international lenders, including multilateral institutions and bilateral agreements to address pressing economic challenges. However, the growing debt profile has sparked apprehension about the country's ability to meet its repayment obligations. Economists and financial experts have cautioned that Nigeria's increasing reliance on external borrowing could pose significant risk to economic stability. They highlighted potential challenges such as a rising debt servicing costs, limited fiscal space for development, and increased vulnerability to global economic shocks. In response, the government has assured the public that the loans are being utilized judiciously to stimulate growth, create jobs, and improve infrastructure. Officials also emphasized ongoing efforts to diversify the economy, enhance revenue generation, and manage the debt burden effectively. Despite these assurances, stakeholders are calling for greater transparency, prudent fiscal management, and a comprehensive strategy to reduce dependence on borrowing. As the year ends, all eyes remain on Nigeria's economic planners to navigate the delicate balance between development needs and debt sustainability. We keep borrowing. We just keep borrowing. And, and I don't even know if we can get out of that because we're so used to borrowing that any little thing, we just go external borrowing. And as a child, I know what, one thing my mom always told me, something that she imbibed in me was, don't borrow. Manage what you have. Do not sell your properties. Manage what you have. It's just about cutting your, co your, your coat according to your cloth, according to your resources. So these are the resources you have. These are what we have in Nigeria. Why are we not managing it? Instead, we have to keep borrowing every single time. And guess what? You're not really seeing what the monies are being used for. Now, they've said not to worry. It's going to be used judiciously. What is the word judiciously? Because so far, if we're looking at track records, we've not really seen that. Instead, we're seeing them spend so largely, living, uh, you know, amazing luxury lifestyles, buying luxury cars, yachts, um, you know, renovating houses. That's what they've been using the monies for. Instead of the people, instead of having to better the lives of the people, we're talking about infrastructure. There are so many roads that are so bad. In fact, I was at a kitty for a wedding over the weekend, and the road to go to that place was ridiculous. And I'm like, there is a governor in this state. There is someone who this is his own constituency. There is a senator from this place. The roads were so bad. In fact, let's not even get over to there. Let's look at Lagos. Do you know how many portals are on the road? How many cars go bad every single day? Let's talk about job creation. Nigeria, 70% of our population, we're a population of over 200 million people. And 70% of that population are the youths. Now, this, most of these youths do not have jobs. A lot of people do not have jobs where out of jobs there is no job creation so why are you borrowing all of this money if you are not going to take care of your people if you're not going to do the infrastructure if you're not going to create jobs if you're not going to even have primary health care centers for people in their villages and the general hospital making sure that we have a better health care system god forbid you're driving on a road today you are involved in an accident how swiftly do you think you'll get to the hospital well i know what you're thinking not so swiftly so these are the things we're talking about. If you're borrowing and you're saying we're borrowing because of these causes, because of these um, challenges that we have, and this is what we want to use the money for. I'm sure everybody will clap for you and be happy and say, yes, the government is thinking about us. The government is thinking for us and thinking of how our lives can be better. But no, that's not the case. Corruption has eaten so deeply that we don't know what these monies are being used for. And of course, that's why we're calling for transparency. That's what we're calling for accountability. There are so many um, civil society organizations that call for this. We want, to, we want you to be transparent. And please, can we manage what we have? Let's start with that. I think at this point, we need to stop borrowing. Because if we're talking about our borrowings to the tune of $45 billion, that's a lot of money. At what point are we going to pay that? If you put all Nigerians together, well, except the, the wealthy ones, but 
every average Nigerian, you say you want to do a mean um, or, or an average of what everybody owes, I'm not sure we can pay that. And we cannot keep borrowing over and over again. So at this point, I think we should really slow down on the borrowing. Let's manage what we have. Let's even know what we have and start from there. All right, our final top training story says Bobriski accuses EFCC security agencies of human rights violation. Popular Nigerian social media personality Idris Okunaye, widely known as Bob Risky, has accused the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and other security agencies in the country of violating human rights. This accusation was accompanied by a filing of a court case seeking to restrain these agencies from further alleged infringements. In a statement shared on social media, Bob Risky claimed that security operatives have consistently overstepped their boundaries, subjecting individuals to harassment, intimidation, and unlawful actions. The socialites expressed a desire for accountability and respect for citizens' constitutional rights, urging the judiciary to intervene by setting clear limits on the powers of these agencies. But Risky's legal filing aims to secure an injunction preventing the EFCC and other agencies from engaging in actions that are deemed oppressive or unlawful. In addition to sharing the court's documents, Bobriski reiterated the importance of protecting human rights and called on Nigerians to support efforts to hold security agencies accountable for their actions. This development has sparked significant public interest, with many lauding the move as a step towards ensuring accountability, while others view it as a contentious battle between a public figure and state institutions. The EFCC and the named agencies have yet to respond to the allegations. As the case unfolds, it raises critical questions about the balance between enforcing the law and respecting the fundamental rights of citizens in Nigeria. And I think that is the, that's the key word there, you know, the balance between enforcing the law and still, still just respecting our fundamental human rights. And I think it's not, I know Babriski here is talking about, you know, the EFCC, but I think it's not just the EFCC. Generally, I, I want to believe um, people get intoxicated with power, especially if they're in a place of power, if they have an office um, you know, that is above you. So they get intoxicated whereby they want to definitely prove something. I don't know what they're trying to prove, but maybe just prove that they are powerful or they can do whatever. And so most people or most agencies, security agencies, financial agencies, whatever, in fact, they, local gate man because he's the one in charge the security there wants to just show that you know it's my office i i i i own the power and that's just not how we're supposed to be it's quite unfortunate that most people just get in, into their heads and i've seen where cases where the efcc would go into hotels and just raid and pick up people i'm wondering what intel do you have do you know who you're going for but you go there, you pick up everybody and you label everybody a criminal. You're seeing police on the road, um, uh, you know, as, so as long as you're driving and maybe you're a young person, they label you a criminal. And because they have that power, they feel like I can say whatever, I can do whatever, um, I'm above you. But with power comes humility. You're supposed to be humble enough with that power that's what is supposed to happen not trying to oppress or intimidate people because you've been because you wield such power and i think that's the same thing um, that has happened here i know that this story is quite complicated and we cannot really get into that but i think bob Risky was trying to go to another country was trying to travel or something and the efcc came and picked him out of um out of the aircraft that was even set to actually to actually move was ready to move on the runway and so they picked him out according to him there were bruises you know obviously his fundamental human rights was being violated and like i said it's a very complicated story because a lot of people are saying oh now these are grounds for asylum in fact i was checking out the story on social media a lot of people are saying oh with everything that has happened he can actually file um grounds for asylum that you know his country obviously they are oppressing him and stuff like that I we do not want, I know everybody had their own impression about Bob Risky, but 
but risky is on one hand there are so many people who are going through this as well there was a there was a story of a woman i think it was sometime last month that also called out the efcc she claimed that um they came to pick up her husband they kept him in detention they knew that he wasn't a part of whatever was going on but still as she said i was going to you know come on social media and talk about everything and she went on social media and ranted and she said they even um they even bruised her as well so we cannot be doing this. If you are a security agency, do everything by the book. Do everything. If you are you're supposed to be checking, check everything. Don't go and violate people's fundamental human rights. And this is where we need to start to speak up. Um, there are peaceful protesters. Obviously, they are being intimidated. They are being violated. We cannot. We. It's 2024. It's 2024. Everybody's talking about other things. Everybody's talking about their mental health. Everybody's talking about compassion. Everybody's talking about better ways to do things. So we cannot still be living in barbaric era. Like we don't know. We're in a modern day age right now. So please, security agencies, financial institutions, whatever. If you're in a place of power, do what is right. Stop violating people's fundamental human rights. And like I said, it's time for people to speak up about this. All right, so that's it for our top training stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.